am trying to prepare for tonight's dinner and I have been having bread issues <laughs> this week. Jason is really hungry for a meatloaf sandwich. So I thought, oh, homemade bread, you know, with a meatloaf sandwich, that would be extra special for him when he comes home. Well, Walmart here in this part of Texas does not carry homemade bread. The boys ran to United for me, another local grocery store. They didn't have homemade bread. Walmart didn't even have the kind of frozen bread that I use and United did not have the frozen <laughs> bread that I use. Oh my goodness, I am telling you, this has been a week long search for bread. So the boys ended up finding this one. It's a ready dough bread. It's just a, you know, three loaves of bread, frozen. So I took it out this morning to thaw and they were all stuck together. They come in this styrofoam package and they were all stuck together, like almost like it had frozen or thawed together and then when they refroze it, it stuck. So I decided to leave it out just for a little bit. It's been sitting out for about half an hour and I was able to take a butter knife and like go in between and then break them apart. So for future problems to save me from the hassle, <laughs> I decided to use gallon size freezer bags and I'm gonna wrap the extra two loaves separately in gallon size freezer bags and then I'm gonna put them in here. But I did get a loaf in the pan. It is rising. I am bound and determined. Jason is gonna have homemade bread with his meatloaf sandwiches tonight. Tonight I am making chicken and dumpling soup. I have this recipe on my channel. I've made it in the past and I will have the video linked above in an iCard and below this video. This is a delicious soup with lots of flavor. So I am starting out with my vegetables, carrots, celery, and some onion in the soup pot. For the chicken, I'm actually going to just season it with salt, pepper, and a little bit of Lowry's, and I'm gonna put it in the oven and I'm gonna bake it. And then I'm going to cut it up into bite-sized pieces and add it to the soup. This is the secret ingredient to this soup, and it really bumps up the flavor. Two teaspoons of poultry seasoning takes it over the top. This soup helps cut some corners by using buttermilk biscuits. You put a little bit of flour on your buttermilk biscuits, refrigerated buttermilk biscuits, cut them into fours, and then put them in the soup for dumplings. Today is a very chilly 43 degrees. It's dark, dreary. We're supposed to be in for another rainstorm, possible snow tomorrow morning, which results in low energy and we are really tired. We've had a busy day. So tonight for dinner, this is what I'm making. So tonight I'm keeping it very, very simple and really quick. And we are having beef tacos. And of course they're going to be in cheesy taco shells because that seems to be what the boys are stuck on lately.
Today we are having Zupa Toscana Potato Soup. This soup is perfect for a cold winter's day. It warms you up very nicely. But as you can see, today is not really cold here. It's actually supposed to be 62 and the sun is bright and shining and streaming into my door. But hey, soup is good any time of the year. We call it Zupa soup. I have made this soup in the past. I will have the video that also has the recipe linked below and in an iCard. You can tell I make this very often because it has splashes all over the recipe. I am glad that I have stored this recipe in a plastic holder. I will have my video of how I store my recipes linked below and in an iCard as well. These are the ingredients that I will be putting in my soup. Also, I add, I think it's seven cups of water is what I'll be adding to it too. So you have some potatoes and onions, some chicken broth, heavy whipping cream, bacon, some garlic, oh, and a little bit of red pepper flakes. Oh my goodness, it makes such a good flavored soup. This soup originated from the Olive Garden and I have tried it at the Olive Garden and I personally think that the homemade is way better with way more flavor. I really like it. But look at how sad my kale looks. Oh my goodness, it's so droopy, look. <laughs> oh man, it'll still be good in my soup. I forgot to show you that we also add hot sausage. I like the one from Jimmy Dean. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to start cooking this up. Yes, it is only about 12 o'clock in the afternoon. Timothy has class tonight and he likes to eat before class, but also he said he would eat this for lunch too. And soup is really easy to reheat. So that's why I'm starting this early and dinner will actually be done for me tonight, which I am really happy about. As far as the heat in this soup, it's not that bad. I mean, it depends on how many red pepper flakes I put in it. <laughs> I try to go lighter with it because of the hot sausage, which the sausage isn't that bad either. I am not a real spicy type of person where I like really hot stuff. But this one actually, sometimes it'll give us the sniffles while we're eating it, depending on how much I put in for the red peppers. So I'll try to go a little lighter, but it's really good. You have got to try it. If you haven't tried it, give it a try. And then let me know what you think. It says to add the onions and the red pepper right into the sausage. Peeling potatoes is not one of my favorite things to do. So whenever I can use red potatoes, I definitely do that. And red potatoes work perfectly fine in soup. I just added the cream. Let me tell you, this soup smells amazing. I wish you could smell it. I am being a very thoughtful wife. <laughs> And I have put some aside for Jason. I did not add the kale. I will stick this in the freezer after it cools off. When he's ready to eat it, he will add kale and let it simmer for 20 minutes to soften up those potatoes. But for us, I am adding the kale. That's the final step. And then I am letting this simmer for 20 minutes and soup will be ready to eat. You can serve this soup with a nice crusty bread to dip into it.